I'm honored to be part of this panel today. Of course, it is regrettable that we are unable to visit the city of Arkhangelsk and that we can't visit with each other in physical person. But having this platform is an equally impressive achievement. I'm especially thankful to Andrei Vladimirovich Golovnyov for organizing this panel on Arctic nomadism. I speak to you today from the city of Regina in Saskatchewan, right in the Canadian prairies. My home is located on the territories of the Nehayawak, Ashinapek, Dakota, Lakota, and Nakoda, and it is also on the homelands of the Metis Michif Nation on Treaty 4 lands. I will be speaking to you about ethnographic fieldwork conducted by myself on traditional Soyot lands, located along the Oka or Oha River in the eastern Sayan Mountains of westernmost Buryatia, known as Akinski Rayon or Oka. I began working in this area as part of my doctoral studies in 2012 and have been visiting the area repeatedly until travel rest restrictions set in due to COVID-19. Soyots are an indigenous minority with ancestral ties into Mongolia, Eastern Tiva, Tafalaria and Pribaikal, and they reside along the Buryat settlers of the same region. Most Soyots live in a semi-nomadic lifestyle involving a form of transhuman alpine or subalpine pastoralism with a primary winter residence in the valleys and a summer encampment at higher altitude. In former times, spring and fall encampments were also used. Today, most transhuman Soyot households keep yak, dairy cattle, horses, and sheep. Their pastoralism is interspersed with hunting activities, securing a sort of mixed economy. This predominant pattern is a more recent innovation, which in part is the result of a history of intermarriages with pastoral Buryat settler families who came to Oka in the mid to late 18th century. Previously, Soyots were divided into two groups, yak pastoralists and alpine reindeer hunter herders. The reindeer breeding groups rode select reindeer in the Sayan style and lived nomadically with their herds. Soyot reindeer are currently limited to a single herd, which was introduced to the region in the early 1990s. In the 1960s, the Soviet administration had ordered the removal, complete removal, of all collectivized reindeer in Oka, favoring dairy cattle. Although individual families had not owned reindeer for several decades by then, the cull of the collective herds was really traumatic to the people on what I would consider a national level. In the collective farms, reindeer had served as transportation for commercial hunting and geological expeditions. When Soyots reintroduced the species in an effort to, to reassert their indigenous identity in the 1990s, much of the pre-revolutionary herding knowledge had already been lost. Over the past 20 years, the herd has gone through several hands and experiencing major population fluctuation. It is now held by the Soyot community, or Somon, while uh, remaining in the care of one particular family who keep it near Kitoi River on the ancestral lands. Although recent archaeological evidence from high Arctic Russia suggests the domestication of reindeer to go much further back in time in these regions than we previously thought, southern Siberia does still remain among the world's oldest cradles of reindeer domestication. While large herds of several hundred or even thousand animals can thrive on the northern Siberian taiga, where they are kept for meat production, southern Siberian herds have historically been limited to 30 to 100 animals, or maybe even fewer. Given the forested mountain and alpine terrain of the eastern Sayans, it is not practicable to maintain larger herds. Ethnohistorical records show some families operating no more than three to four animals, serving exclusively for transportation of, of designated hunters during seasonal hunts. Some individuals would of course have had larger herds, allowing for the selection of strong riding candidates that then could be shared with the community. We know very little of the details of reindeer nomadism in the eastern Sayans prior to Soviet collectivization. Especially in western Buryatia, nomadism has affected or, or has been and, and, and continues to be affected by Buryat transhuman pastoralism as early as starting with the mid 18th century. Only a handful of researchers vaguely describe Tozhu, Ducha, Karagas, or Soyot nomadic lifestyles prior to the political and economic changes that came with the finalization of the Russian Chinese border. Early Soviet era research, I think, is probably the richest in this regard, but even it does not represent a picture of full nomadism. Ethnographers of the 1990s have relied on neighboring examples to reconstruct an otherwise non-existent record for Oka Soyots. 
Oral Tofa history, as told to me, describes families and their animals moving freely throughout the region, crossing what are today distinct Republican and national borders in search of game. In many ways, contemporary Tofas have returned to a combination of pre- and post-revolutionary reindeer herding styles since the 1990s. This involves seasonal vertical transhumans, and following the Soviet model, contracted Tofa herders tend to the community herd which contains riding deer belonging to individual hunters who use them in winter. Herders and hunters reside in permanent settlements where many of them keep two or more dairy cows, a group of horses, or what's called a taboon, and a subsistence garden. Reindeer herders spend much of their time in the taiga, tracking the collective herd's whereabouts, supervising its seasonal migration, preparing calving sites, selectively castrating bolts, and trimming antlers, and protecting against wolves and many other tasks. In summer, they set smoke smudges to attract the deer by repelling gadflies, and in fall win uh, uh, and winter, they, they draw the animals with urine and salt to maintain human contact at camp. By migrating to higher altitude, reindeer are able to benefit from winds that provide relief from gadflies and other insects. In May, on, the way, on their way uh, up to the peaks, they stop halfway at a tree-sheltered and creek water to calving site where pregnant females give birth before continuing uphill. Mountaintops provide similar benefits to wind-swept coastal plains of the Arctic Ocean used by tundra herds. On these outcrops, deer find ample lichen to fatten up for the winter. Uh, the rut then occurs upon return into the forested valleys in autumn, where herders round up the trained deer and castrate young bulls. The overall distances covered by reindeer in this terrain are actually much smaller um, than, than those for tundra herds. Consequently, routes are switched up frequently to ensure lichen regeneration, which relies on herders' memory of years of migratory routes, some going as far back as 80 years, while also at the same time paying careful attention to how lead deer select new routes on their very own. Okasoyot herders are similarly based in settlements or at winter pasture cabins. Unlike Tofa herders who primarily hunt, many Soyots keep larger numbers of yak, dairy cattle, horses, and sheep, which are moved between lower and higher altitude in summer and winter. To prevent zoonotic diseases from crossing between cattle and reindeer, and to keep the reindeer in deeper snow to protect them against wolves in winter, Soyot reindeer are kept in alpine terrain, which is over 80 kilometers away from the settlement. This really complicates the herder's commute and reduces overall time spent near the herd. Lack of roads and deep spring mud uh, often delay the preparation of calving grounds. While Okasoyots use riding deer on the hunt from time to time, the herd's primary purpose, I think, seems to be its symbolic role in community ethnic heritage. Southern Siberian reindeer breeding really is unique in terms of its close proximity to other domesticated species. The intersection of mountainous taiga and steppe has been home to camels, horses, sheep, yak, and dairy cattle, even if these rarely historically intersected with reindeer. Late Soviet mi migratory maps from Lake Hupsugul or Hufsgerl in northern Mongolia trace the overlap of camel, dairy cattle, sheep, horse, and goat migratory paths all of which are regionally adjacent to Ducha and also historically Soyot reindeer herding territories. Since the pastures required by cattle and the lichen fed on by reindeer do not really overlap at all, societies in these regions have been divided accordingly. This is also reflected by divergent migratory routes either in steppe and pastures or in mountainous taiga. Yet members of either groups periodically joined each other. Interspecies proximity has also led to interchangeability of techniques in human-animal relations. For example, saddles designed for small statued Buryat horses were adapted to fit tall standing Karagas breed reindeer, and this cross-applicability really reduced the number of material possessions in a highly mobile lifestyle. Interchangeability is made possible also by the mountainous geography itself, in which reindeer stay within reach of human households year-round. Hunters collect their transportation deer, which in Tofa are known as char or chari, 
for the winter hunt in late fall before releasing their horses to fend for themselves over the cold season. Come spring, they release their reindeer and catch their horses again for the summer. Following this rhythm, reindeer migrate up the mountain to rest in summer and come down the mountain for work in winter. In the case of soyots, maintaining such an interspecies schedule has been much more complicated. While soyots also release their horses over the winter, they must keep up with larger numbers of cattle, sheep, and other species, all of which rely on extensive seasonal haymaking. And this follows a strict schedule on hereditary patches and of course calls for the participation of the whole family, from pasture fertilization to harvesting. With dairy cattle to feed, householders simply cannot leave for the entire winter to go hunting. Records from the 1920s already describe yak herders lodging their two to five winter service reindeer with a designated herder over the summer. And in winter, a hunter's family could then stay with their cattle, allowing the husband to go out on the hunt. More recently, soyot herders have tried to make this migra these migratory paths of reindeer and cattle intersect to accommodate their diverse species needs. But zoonotic diseases and wolf predation, both common in regions used for transhumans, have made this really quite impracticable. It emerges from this that Soviet and pre-Soviet settlement and also relocation of Soyots from higher alpine regions in, southeast, in the southeast of Oka to high altitude pastures in central Oka has proven disadvantageous to the reintroduction of reindeer. A similar dilemma seems to be emerging in northern Mongolia, where new wildlife conservation laws are now legally preventing Ducha reindeer herders from pursuing their ancestral hunting based lifestyle and economy. Where a hunting economy loses traction, reindeer become largely superfluous, and former hunter-herders must consider alternatives, including moving to adjacent lands that are more favorable to cattle-based pastoralism. For Duchas of Mongolia, this would mean transitioning to a subsistence mode already adopted by many of their relatives. Such a transition would be emblematic of the larger region, uh, region uh, in which Tojus of eastern Tuva and Soyots of western Buryatia always seem to have had a related pastoral counterpart. In conclusion, my ethnographic and ethnohistorical research suggests the existence of a recursive regional pattern for transitioning between reindeer-based taiga hunting and cattle-based pastoralism, a pattern that really persists into the present. This two-pronged approach has allowed residents of the region to respond to political and economic hardships, optimizing affordances in a landscape where both modes of subsistence can be practiced within close proximity of each other. In my view, there are at least three related causes for the transition from pure nomadism to regimes of transhumans in this region. One, the incorporation of dairy cattle and with it the need for scheduled hay making. Two, the formalization of administrative and patrolled borders. And three, the settlement and relocation of herding families from high alpine to moderate mountain areas. Future research will do well to inquire how younger people foresee regional and international mobility as an adaptive feature in southern Siberia and whether reindeer will be part of it or not.